recording. All right, all right, all right. Michael Gavin here, your mind mechanic with your... <coughs> Some water right there out of the gate. Gosh dang. We don't edit those, though. We just redo them. Michael Gavin, your mind mechanic. Mind tune of time. 2 p.m. Central Standard Time every week. To tune up your heart, your mind, one of the times your ideas don't die in your heart, so your heads or your hard drive. So I've been doing this. This is the... So I did... 31, I think it was 31, uh, I think it was 31, your daily jump starts since January. And then I've done 31 uh, mind tune-up times, but that's been since about June-ish because I do one of those once a week, what we're doing today. And I do the your daily jump start five days a week right now. Those are of course shorter, 10 to 20 minutes. And these typically have been longer, but um, so you can mind tune-up time live.com. If you're catching this after the fact and it's not live, and you can join in live uh, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time on Tuesdays uh, and jump into Zoom. So rock and roll. Today, I, I want to ask you a question. I heard this. I can't even remember. I was watching so many different things, and I wrote down a few things here. I didn't write down who it was that said it because um, they were getting it from somebody else, I think, and they didn't say who that was. But if you owned a million-dollar car, how would you take care of it? So I don't know how your car is right now. I don't know if you have a car, if your car's broken down, if it's got holes in it, if it's uh, beat up, uh, if the oil chains hasn't been changed, it's 5,000 miles over. But uh, depending on the crowd here today or who's listening, uh, may get a, a, a different variety of answers. But if you own a million-dollar car, to imagine the car you have now, I don't know if it's a used car, uh, if it's a $30,000 car, or how you typically treat cars. If you had a million-dollar car right now, would you treat it differently than you treat your current car? Would you take care of it better? Or would you treat it the same way that you treat it now? Is it totally, Catherine, would you treat the car better than you treat your current car or would you treat it the same? So that's the question. Would you treat it the same or would you treat it better or would you treat it dramatically better? Like you're like, man, I had a million dollar car. I'd really be taking care of that. Make sure the oil changes, right? So to what degree would that million dollar car so i would be much more careful so she, she, Catherine says terrible on cars i'd be much more careful so what i love is this little exercise i play another one which is you know what would you do if you didn't need money and we kind of reverse engineer what you say there to then get you to a place where you get to do what you um would do if you didn't need money because so many times we're going well i would do this and i would do that it's like would you do that if you didn't need money oh well yeah no i no i'm because it's about making money. Yeah, no, we need to, what would you do? What, what uh, uh, activities would you do if you truly did not need to do any activities for money, to make money? And so this question is this idea of, you know, a lot of people getting in a headspace of a million dollar car and thinking, oh my gosh, right? So, so, so she says, I'd treat it slightly better. It's everybody's going to have these various versions of, of how they would perceive how they currently treat the car they have, how they take care of the car they have versus if you had a million dollar car, because, you know, 99.99% of the time, unless you're, you know, talking to multi, multi millionaires. And even then I think Warren Buffett's a billionaire and he still drives like a 15 year old Cadillac or something, but <laughs> you know, Buick. And so it doesn't even matter, you know, who it is. You're not necessarily going to be in a room full of people who all have million dollar cars. They may have a million dollars worth of cars, uh, but there's not a lot of cars in a million dollar car. But now take this into consideration. You are the million dollar car, right? If you viewed yourself, whatever you're thinking you're doing, now I know where Tashina is at in her headspace. So I could see where Tashina by and large, this shift wouldn't be dramatic because she's taking care of, like she's treating herself right now. Tashina who's in the chat, for those of you listening, watching or reading, but Tashina's in a place where she's treating herself like a million dollar call already, right? I maybe treat it slightly better, right? But if, if she transfers that to herself and says, I have a million dollar car, how would I treat myself differently? It's not dramatically different, right? She wouldn't treat the car much better versus the car she has now. She wouldn't treat herself that much better than she already treats herself now. But when I look at that in, in self-talk and self-belief, what's up? There's my man, Fernando. What's up, legend? When I think of that and think of my trajectory of life and a lot of people that I coach and I work with and I help, when we think about that, if you take that into consideration yourself and how do you treat yourself, how do you, you know, speak to yourself, how are you treating yourself? 
right? And so if you viewed yourself in higher regard, you'd likely take better care of yourself. But this is back to what are you thinking leads to your being, leads to your doing, leads to your getting, right? You think different, you be different, you be different, you get, you know, do different, you do different, you get different. But so if you think of yourself as not valuable, not worth that much, you know, you don't really make much of an impact. Those are your thoughts. You, you belittle yourself, you shame yourself, you, you dim, which is something I used to do. You dim your light to shine others' lights or make others' lights brighter, right? Rather than be equally as bright, if you want to lift somebody up, you tear yourself down. I used to do these things, right? And so there's that aspect where to the degree you think about yourself through a lens that is like you're a beater, and right? you're like, ah, I don't care. I run into something. Who, who cares, right? Ah, I'll spill some coffee on it. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. It's got stains already all over it, right? You kind of treat this thing where you don't take that much care of it because you're like, it doesn't really matter. I just get another one. I mean, it's only a $2,000 car. i have run it into the ground. And when it dies, I'll just get a new one, right? Another $2,000 car. Not that there's anything wrong with a $2,000 car. But to the degree that you're like, ah, who cares about changing the oil? Just burn it into the ground, right? Like that's what we're happening in our life. Like there's these metaphors when you look at certain things that we're doing in, in real life with our cars, with our houses, with whatever, that we're also doing to ourselves, which is then pro producing the results we do or do not get in our life. And so if you viewed yourself and thought, wow, like, I'm worth a ton. If you thought I am worth a ton, I am valuable, I bring great value to others, then how would you take care of yourself? Would you burn yourself into the ground? Would you eat crap all the time? Would you not sleep well? Would you do all these things that have you not operate at your best, not give your best to your, your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your, your friend, your, your lover, your, your employees, your, your, your contractors, your coworkers through the drive through right? And not seeing any of them as better or worse than another or on a hierarchy of like, well, they're better than these people, but rather seeing people as people and humans as humans and this ability that, you know, I know it gets talked about a lot, this idea of self-care, but there is that aspect that how we think about ourselves and view ourselves, we're not thinking of ourselves as a million dollar car. People might say, I'd take way better care of it. I'd be way more careful. I'm not talking be careful in the sense you don't want to drive the thing. We're not going to that extreme, right? Then all of a sudden it's like, well, if I had that, then I'd be really afraid to drive it. Like I wouldn't want to crash it. I wouldn't want to. So there's this balance between this ability to view yourself through a higher lens of life, a higher value, a higher worth, and know that your net worth, your income, your bank account, your likes, your shares, your social following, none of that is a dictator of your value as a human being, right? And I've even played with those things where it's like, you know, I, I, it's great. I can identify it at others, but then at times I can be bad at identifying it myself because there's been periods of time where I could sit here and go, well, I'm not getting a lot of engagement on these videos and, and likes and shares and interaction. Like, is it really any good? Do people even like it? And then you do other things where like, oh, people really, really like it. Like there's people, I mean, if we take at least Marty to Sheena, probably Fernando, and I think my caller, like, if, if you had to guess how many, how many sessions of just this, I said, I've done, I think 31 of them. I mean, I feel like Marty, once Marty found me, he's been on probably 80% of those since like last July or August. Yeah. I've lost count. Right. So there's that aspect. If, if this was boring, if this was completely now, some people may find it boring, not helpful, and they won't come back. Then I've also found people who they get exactly what they need in one session and they go off and do a million things and then come back. But I used to view myself through this lens of like all this engagement and all these external things and say, well, if I'm not getting the engagement or the interactions or the likes or the shares, then I must not be good. Now, sometimes if I got on here and there was nobody on here, right? Like, I could be the greatest gift to known on human on earth to what I do. But, you know, if you only get in front of a few people, I, I can't sit here and base that. So my wife, you know, she used to do things and she had 
you know, skewed number, uh, how it happened and whatever, but she had three or 4,000 times. She's up to like 20,000 Instagram, but there was a time she could post a picture and get 10 likes. And it's like, well, it's a picture suck and this and that. And then somebody with a huge following would share that same thing in the same photo. They got 10 on hers would get a few thousand. So sometimes one, we're in front of the wrong people with our message, our product, our service. You know, it, 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 depending on what you're selling or depending on who you're talking to or depending on who you're telling your ideas, your dreams, your aspirations to, you could be telling, you could have a great thing telling the wrong people. There's too many people, my whole dreams dying in the hard heads and hard drives is because people, right? People have told the wrong people, their dreams, their ideas, and their aspirations. And those people took their limited view of themselves and their world and their reality and projected it on you and masked it in form of keeping you safe and taking care of you and caring about you. And that may be the truth. It's not that it's not, but they felt pain. And the great thing about people is by and large, most people are trying to help people avoid it. If you really get down to it, a lot of people who have discouraged you, who have told you you can't do something, you shouldn't do something, that that's a bad idea, is because they don't want you to get your hopes up. They don't want you to have these big expectations because that's probably too good to be true, right? Because somewhere in their life, some form of that language was told to them when something didn't work out. Ah, see, they were upset. And then there's their mom or dad said, ah, oh, see, you don't want to get your hopes up. Right. And then we can transfer that on. We have our hopes up on things and things don't work out. And we have kids and then we're telling people, ah, oh, you're telling our kids, ah, oh, don't do that. I don't think that's going to work out. And the likelihood is it's all innocent. But what I've found is that when we're staying in this place where we're seemingly staying safe, there's a lot of people, and I've been there at times, dying inside. Right? Your car, she just said, I need the regular tune-ups. I perform better that way, right? We do. Right? You got to get the, the wheels aligned, air in your tires, new tires sometimes, right? Oil changes, new spark plugs. I just had to get some spark plugs in my car. Uh, it's got better gas mileage now. Like literally just changing the spark plugs, putting this one thing in a couple of little tweaks. I'm going to guess. I don't even know. I didn't even keep track of it, but I'm just going to guess. You know, I'm supposed to get 25 miles a gallon, let's just say. I was probably getting about 18. And since it's got a lot of miles on it, I'm still not getting brand new, you know, mileage on it. Got the 98,000 miles. But if I was getting 15 to 18, probably getting back up to 22, 23. Not, not full where it should be, but not where it was going. It was a burning gas. Um, I just got some tweaks. Now, Grant, I hadn't changed the, the, the practice without a preacher, right? But I had changed the doggone spark plugs to 98,000 miles. So they did pretty good, right? But it was starting to like, they were, they were bad. Like my dad changed them, helped me change it, or helped, he, he, I didn't help, he didn't help me. He changed them. And, uh, and they, were, they, were, they were crap. And, and so for us, it's, it's, it's that kind of thing. Like we, we never recharge. I got my power up sign. There's more people on here now. I got my power up sign. I think, you know, more people up here. I think I'm gonna put it right up here. There's only a couple people on my start. I think I'm gonna put it right up there. Uh, but like, we're not recharging. We're not resetting. We go to bed, but we, we get two hours of sleep, three hours of sleep, or we're in consistent sleep, right? Or we're going to bed at a different time every single day. And it's just like, and, and we're doing things that just exhaust us. And for me, something I brought up is I was spending a lot of time building, like there's people I've brought up when you take cars, hybrids, you know, electric and gas only. And if you don't fit into, if you're doing something that's against the grain of that, it doesn't mean you can't do it, right? But how long are you going to tolerate that? How long are you going to do it? Some people, there's no toleration because they love it, right? We're all hybrids, but something that had started to exhaust me, I actually wasn't, it's been really cold. There's been snow, there's been these things. And I wasn't following some of my patterns, getting out a walk and, and, you know, just doing a lot in the house. And it was good because of all the self-work I've done and what I teach, like by and large, I was happy, but then I wasn't getting walks. I wasn't getting bike rides and I was spending a lot of time in my head rather than in my heart. And I was spending too much time doing things that's like a fish trying to climb a tree, 
So for me, it was like putting systems in place so that I can show up and do these sessions. And then there's people that take these things and make sure that it gets brought to life outside of it and gets found and gets seen and gets heard so that it doesn't just help the 10, 20 people that watch it while it's live, but that it can go and help other people after the fact too. And so I found that in my video production company when I used to run that, like I didn't use a lot of the internet. I ran around like a chicken with my head cut off, meet people in person and knocking down, you know, going in networking events. And like, I did so much where I connected people. I used my people skills. You can use your people skills on the internet. I'm doing it right now, but like, it's a lot different. Like there could be a place of business where I could just walk in the door. Is the owner here? Yeah, I'm the owner. And I can get into a conversation. That's different than like, you know, at times, it's not as easy to get in that door. Now I put out content, but like it's a different way to approach things than the way I built things offline. Online is a different animal. And at times the way that things work offline, some of it transfers over for sure. And then other times it doesn't. And so for me, I recognized I was getting snippy. I was getting short. It's getting a little bit more angry. I was spending too much time. It's a fish out of water. I don't believe when we're doing our thing, like I could do this. I just try to have some control over the time, but I could be on it for the next four hours. And I would bet my life that at least a few of you'd still be on. I guarantee it. Not because I'm saying it. Now you're like, oh, well, I'm not going to stay or I'll stay. Like to prove or not prove. Like I know that if I would have done that, there'd be some on. There'd also be some people who happen to click an email or whatever four hours later and they're like, oh, let's click on it. They don't know what time it is. And like, oh God, there he is. Or they leave and three hours later, they come back, right? But that's a sweet spot for me. If I spend too much time, analytical, critical, computer, text, all of that. So where is that for you? Some people can do both really well and other people can't and you're fighting it. And for me, the, the concept of who, not how has really resonated. School talks about how to do things, not who to do things, right? If you were the kid in school who's like, I suck at this, but this kid next to me is really good at math. Why don't you just do my math homework for me, right? That was frowned upon. You get in trouble, right? You get in detention. You'd get an F, you'd fail, right? But yet entrepreneurship, by and large, depending on what you're going to build, is through collaboration, it's through help, it's through getting people who at times are better at you than something than you will ever be. But we were taught for 18 years that getting help and support or somebody else to do something is wrong. You need to learn how to do it or you need to do it yourself, right? And so then when people wanna get into this entrepreneurial game or self-employed or do their own business, especially if you came from, you know, not that, like I never went to college and outside of, you know, 18 years old, I've always had my business, I'm 35 now. And so I've never had to go be an employee somewhere, clock in, clock out since I was like 18. Um, but some people who, you know, in their 30s or 40s, you've always clocked in, clocked out, had that steady paycheck overall. And now you're like, ah, I'm tired of that. I want more freedom. I, you know, I want to do my own thing. And you're seeing all these people talk about entrepreneurship and have a business. And, and then some of them are shaming people for having jobs. Like there's so much just eh, going around that people don't know <laughs> what to do, right? Don't know what's right for them. But there is that aspect when you were conditioned for your whole life to fit in a box, do what you're told, keep your mouth shut, don't get help, do it yourself, learn everything yourself, right? And then you get a job and they're not necessarily always telling you that, but what is happening is there's a lot of people around you. Then when you go to do your own thing, all those people disappear. It doesn't mean there's not people to help, but you can't just wake up, clock in, go through the motions and get paid, right? That happens at jobs. I mean, at least the last time I had a job and some people I talked to, like depending on the place you work for, like you can do the bare minimum and get paid at some things. Like you don't have to like put a lot of mental energy. It might be draining. You might not like it. I get all that, but like you just can show up and get paid. If I just wake up and don't do certain things, like, I mean, granted, depending on how you set up your business, I get it. But like when you're growing a business and you don't have any momentum, you don't have regular clients or anything, like just waking up and 
you know, showing up in air quotes isn't going to have you have typically a successful business because now there's other traits and skills that you may not have. And then are you going to learn them? Do you want to learn them? Do you, people say, well, do I have money? Do I not have money to get help? Like, how do I get help? Where do I find the people? Where do I find the business? Right. There's a lot of things that it's sometimes in a job or in collaboration with other people, those things get taken care of. Um, but I think breaking these paradigms, what I'm seeing is the old bleed your eyes out, sleep when you're dead, like super alpha aggressive energy where the only way, um, they know how to succeed is through brute force and pounding their way through a wall. Um, that things are changing. People are knowing they don't have to do something they hate for the rest of their life or do something. They're kind of like, eh, I don't know. I don't really like I don't really love it. I don't really have a lot of fun, but it's it's more known and comfortable than pursuing something that'll light my soul on fire. And then some people say, well, I got to do that. You're really good at what you do, right? And so anyways, I can go on and on. Get on these tangents. And uh, <laughs> how's everybody doing? Sometimes I want to take a breath and just ask, how are you doing? Making sense, resonating, like a preacher on a pulpit sometimes, speaking my language. Good. We're going to have some fun today here, Catherine. Probably good, uh, a good place. Any other final questions in the chat? Not final questions, but obviously those of you coaching clients will have the second half as well. But um, uh, anybody new, I'm going to take on uh, Catherine here shortly. And then anybody else have any questions you want to put in the chat or Q&A box or whatnot that I can spark off here for five or 10 minutes that I can help out? Let me know if you're typing something as well real quick. Um, sometimes 60 seconds can feel like a lifetime. I hope somebody's typing something up. Yeah. Great from Fernando before I pull on. Um, I always want to hear you. I can help you. We don't live in a world anymore. Like I, like some of you are all different ages, but when I started my company back in 2004 to 2006, the world was I mean, not that long ago. It was very different than it is today. Just simply from options. Uh, you know, there was still a time where my grandpa's truth that he's told for 30 years was true. You know, he had an agent said, if you would have written this book 50 years ago, you had been a bestseller. But there was, by and large, when that was 30 years ago, there really wasn't many options for any kind of self-publishing like there is today. Amazon didn't exist. Um, you pretty much needed, you know, I don't know if I have the book sitting here. There's a book by James Altucher called Choose Yourself. Right back then, there weren't, like, you really had to be a trailblazer. The options, if you weren't the trailblazer, there were no options to really choose yourself. You know, if you were a musician, you had to be chosen and then played on the radio and then your records in the store, right? Like that's how you were likely going to make money doing it. Um, you know, if you were an author, by and large, you were going to have to get an agent, a publisher, et cetera, get your book published and get it in the bookstore. Um, and it was very different of how you would have marketed and how you would have promoted YouTube didn't exist, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, you know, Facebook, um, email newsletters, all these things, by and large, you know, were non-existent even when I started. I still advertised in the bloody yellow pages. <laughs> there might be some people young enough that don't even know what the heck those are. And then, you know, most people might, you know, some people might still have one. Uh, but I advertised on the yellow pages. And so there weren't, I didn't know what I didn't know, but I also didn't know a lot. So it made it easy. It was kind of like A or B, right? It was a little bit more black and white. And that could be a blessing and a curse because some people it's like it works or it doesn't. And then if it doesn't, there's no options. So for me, that aspect of now today, there are, I don't think anybody that I would get in front of would say that they don't have any opportunity. And there's nothing, they don't, they don't have any idea what they could do. What I find a lot of times is that people might say that because they don't, they don't know how to articulate it, but it's not a matter of not having any idea on earth at all 
what you like to do, would like to do, or what options are available. Yes, that's true from time to time, but sometimes it's that paralysis by analysis. I could do this, 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 I could do this. Believe me, you're talking to the like. The like, oh my God, I don't know what to do and I don't know what to choose because there's so many things that sound tasty and sexy. Now for me, I've actually lived and breathed in perfect action. So I have tried, literally done and tried many, 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 many things. Um, I didn't just think about it, read about it, watch about it, learn about it, and then not do anything about it. I've done a lot through the years and I've had business partners, employees, contractors, um, you know, I've started online businesses. I've had things that had some success and things that had no success, things that, you know, started and stopped and, you know, in a week, in a day, in a month, um, and things that made a few hundred thousand dollars in revenue. And then they stopped and I was more or less the culprit for stopping it. There was no business partner problems or issues there or people not even liking the product. And so, um, um, it's really fascinating. Um, so, uh, Mark saying doubt is often time, oftentimes the shadow cast by others, fears and criticism, something that is spoken to us at times when we are finding who we are and growing, becoming empowered is the process by which we illuminate those shadows to find what we are truly capable of. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful phrase there. And I think that that's what happens at times as well is we've reached a place where likely that's why things like this, these mind tune ups, this kind of being surrounded by encouragement, optimism, belief, believing as my shirt is that too many times, either directly or indirectly, we're getting too much uh, projection of what's not possible, what we can't do and what won't work, right? And so the problem is our subconscious, one of my greatest gifts I give myself that you can give yourself is to bring more awareness self-awareness to your life, right? Rather than looking through life through a lens of like autopilot every day and like repeating the same day kind of over and over again and not really like, like wanting different results, maybe even expecting, but truly not doing anything different and then wondering why we keep getting the same thing is that a lot is just subconscious programming that's just running. You heard somebody tell you you couldn't do something or you had an idea and told some people and they said, eh, I don't know, or you thought of an idea and you saw some other people do it and they're like, yeah, you can't do that. That doesn't really work. And you're like, oh, I guess maybe I shouldn't. And you get into this place of kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, is it resignation? You just get into this place of like, I don't know what to do. I've got these ideas, but you don't know why you're not acting on any of them and doing any of them because Somewhere along the line, there's a program running that says you can't do it. It won't work out. You're not good enough. You started too old. You started, you're too young. You don't have enough experience. Like there's just this stuff that we've heard that we've read and that's running us more than, than at times this. So I can do this, but you can do this for yourself. So I can be on here, but the point is not for the need, right? Like the who, not how look, I've had to come to grips with the fact that the kind of work that I do, that the truth of the matter is you can be the greatest brain surgeon on earth and you're going to need somebody to do your brain surgery. You could be the greatest tattoo artist on earth and you're still going to need somebody for most of your body and probably maybe your whole body to do your tattoo as well. And so at times, some of the things that I may struggle with um, versus my ability to self-coach and work through it on my own that comes to mind and gives me a lot of peace as to why there's a fine line between truly needing something like this, right? So that idea that I was going to say is, you know, the goal is that, yeah, you can find the who to tune up your car, right? So you're like, I never, I'm not a mechanic. I don't know how to do anything with a car and I don't really want to learn how to do anything with a car. So therefore you, you give up your power to the mechanic. If there's anything wrong with your car, like, ah, I guess I'm screwed. If it died on the side of the road, you're like, well, I don't know what to do with it. Like, so if you can't get help, I don't know how to fix it. And I think that in life, 
there's that aspect where with the work I'm doing, I think on some level, there's always going to be a need for some type of external help of a person like me. But I do believe in my heart that there is a lot that if you're surrounding, which was what I'm always trying to do, that there's a lot you can learn. Right? And you can do for yourself, right? So it's, it's the whole parable of like, you know, this idea of not teaching or not giving a person a fish, but teaching them to fish, right? That's my goal here is that, yeah, I'm here. Like I'm that external where, you know, the brain surgeon at times where it's like, yeah, you know, like I can do a lot, but that I need, right? So the, the brain surgeon might know a lot of things that he can do and things he can self-diagnose and whatever, but if he needs the surgery at times, he's going to need that. So at times, like there's that aspect that there's a lot you can do yourself. And it doesn't mean that getting a help like a me will just eventually evaporate. Um, because I have found that, that I get so good at talking myself in and out of things, like, cause there's no feedback, but myself. So there's a lot where I'm like, I can work through and I'm becoming happy. Like there's so much, but there's some of those things when it comes to the execution of certain things, I'm not lacking information. I'm information overload. I see every option in every way and all the ways I've done 10 of the ways out of the 12 that are available, whatever. And, and now it's like, yeah, but I already did that. And it didn't work. Oh, but wait, I'm a different person. I could do it differently. This, you know, and, and so you're processing that. And so I do believe, and that's what Fernando's saying. If they don't know your dreams, they can't shoot them down. Right. So we don't share them, but I think it's so powerful. And you all show up to this call. Cause obviously there's some form of importance of this is that can we all agree though? And I don't know if you've got to experience this in life. I've worked with Fernando directly. Like there's people that I've, I've not just spoken at a whole bunch like on a call right now where there's a bunch of you on here, but I've had that individualized and some people are on here. I've had personal, like in person, right? But there's something magical to be able to share your dreams and your aspirations with people who are going to lift you up and are going to encourage you, right? We, we're not meant as human beings to go around in total isolation. So we can sit and not tell anybody our, our dreams so that they don't get shot down. Or we can do one of two things. Or both. Surround yourself with people that are going to lift you up, that are going to support you, right? That are going to encourage you, inspire you, motivate you. And simultaneously, believe enough in ourselves and what we're doing to where by and large, nobody gets through to you, even when you happen to, to, to read or see or interact with somebody who says, yeah, I don't think you should do that. Where you can get to a place and go, watch me. Right? Where you can get to a place of compassion and empathy and go, I know that that is a reflection more of their brain, and who they are, than it is on me and my idea. So that person who tells you, you can't do that. That's not going to work. That's stupid. Why don't you do it this way? I don't like that. I think it would be better if, and there's all these things that depending on who it is, maybe given, you can listen to some, go, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But you don't have to allow them to pierce your soul, to pierce your heart, to hurt you. You allow that part. I truly believe, yes, by and large words, do hurt people, but sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can never hurt you. Words do hurt people all day, every day, whether it's directly or indirectly that they hear it or they read it. But I have learned to develop and get to a place where unless it's physical, like getting hit physically and that pain and that you ain't kumbaya, like, oh man, you just beat me over the head with a baseball bat. It doesn't hurt. No big deal. I'm not going to allow it to hurt me. Like, like, no. I don't, you know, I'm the wrong guy if you're going to learn how to have zero pain when you get in physical pain. But emotional, it doesn't mean you won't be having things that hurt sometimes. And you're like, wow, and I can't believe, right? Like if somebody, I always remember Abraham Hicks would say this that I listened to. She would say, if somebody called you that you didn't know and you picked up the phone and said, hi there, 
hello, or you say hello, and the person says, hi, I just want to let you know, you're never going to hear from me again. And I'm never going to talk to you ever again after this call. And then they hang up. You'd be like, that was weird. But it probably wouldn't do much. Now, fast forward to a different phone call. And your best friend of 30 years calls you up and you've talked every day for 30 years. And that friend calls you up and says the same thing that that person just said. Same words. That 10 minutes earlier was just like, that's kind of weird. And didn't really do anything. Same words. But then your friend of 30 years you've talked to every day for 30 years goes, yep, guess what? We're not talking anymore. Take care. Good luck. It's been nice knowing you. Likely going to have a different reaction there. I can see why, right? We don't have to, we're humans, we're not robots, but depending on what severity you want to say or whatever, you can get to a place with certain things where there's a transitional period of time where the default, you can have the human feelings, but then you can get to a place of awareness where these things you can start to flip and things, especially like the telling your dreams to people and people not being supportive, you can get to a place where you don't need those people to support you. One, you're eliminating most of them, at least from those kind of conversations where that'll happen. But two, even if you do, you put yourself out there. It doesn't take much to know that if you read comments or you judge people or you dislike videos or you whatever, that subconsciously there's something saying that that could happen to you. So if you put yourself out here, put your content out there, you share your ideas, you share your dreams, you share your business, you share your things, your service with the world, that there's a high probability that the more it's shared with, there will be people who metaphorically bang you over the head and say, that's stupid. You suck. I don't like you. I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you did that. I don't know why you're doing that. That's a dumb idea. Why are you transitioning careers? You're doing so well. You're so good at that. I'm so envious of you, right? There's these things that are happening. We, we're kind of by and large programmed to avoid confrontation, avoid those kind of interactions. But you can have a self-awareness to where overall that doesn't have to affect you. And that comes with knowing who you are. To any more, if somebody happens to say something that's just outright hateful, people can have feedback. I'm open overall to some feedback, but people are just flat out like rude, mean, hateful. When I used to do, some of you came from Samcart. I'd be on calls where people, they didn't know who I was and they didn't think they were going to get what I was given. So this just happened last year. I'd be on call 200 people. You know, it got to, in the very beginning, no one knew me. And then it got to people where there'd be a blend of people who were on there that knew me. And then there's people who had no idea who I was and they had expectations of what I was going to do and what I was going to teach and how I was going to teach and what they were going to get. And there'd be people in the comments that would go, is this guy going to get to a point anytime soon? Like, this is a real waste of time. Like, what is this? This is not what I signed up for. Are you going to share something else? Like these are common, I've got like 200 people on and I got a bunch of people who are really loving it, excited and enjoying it and happy. And like, this is great. This is not what I expected, but exactly what I needed. And then there's those few people who are like, this guy's a screwball. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't even, this is not what I'm supposed to be getting, right? And so to act like it did nothing at all would be a lie. But the work that I've done I'm bringing it up because it sticks out, but I'm not bringing it up as though in that period of time, it made me hyper question, should I shift? Should I completely change everything that I'm doing? Should I adapt so that those people don't say that or don't think that? I don't want them to think that about me. I don't want them to say that about me. I want everybody who's on here to love me and think I'm amazing. See, when I come from that expectation, everybody's gonna love me. Nobody's gonna dislike me. Everybody's going to think I'm amazing. Nobody's going to have negative comments. Then when it happens, and I maybe think that a part of them may be true, maybe I'm not that good. Maybe I am rambling. Maybe I am too random. Maybe I do need to shut up. Maybe I do need to, right? And then all of a sudden I don't show up because I let the few prevent me from helping the many. Right. And that's, that would be called Catherine dry rain. 
Steve Hardison, if some of you know, and I've talked about him, he calls it dry rain. Two things true at the same time, meaning there can be 50 people on a call all hearing the same thing from the same person. And 50 people go, freaking, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I love it. It's like my soul on fire. This is exactly what I needed to hear. It's so helpful. Oh my gosh, it's great. Keep going, keep going. Don't stop. I need it. I want more of it. And then other people going, who are these losers? These guys are lunatics. These gals and gals are lunatics. Like this is, what kind of cold is this guy running? These people are nuts. This is so weird. Like he's so all over the place. Like, I don't know how anybody can follow this guy, right? But it's the same, like we're on the same thing. We're in the same world, right? But you, you get to create your reality. Right. So there's those certain people, their reality, their crate is I'm crazy. I'm stupid. I'm not smart. I'm too random. I talk too much. I talk too fast. I talk too slow. I talk to this. I look like this. I look like that. And other people are going, this guy's great. This guy's super awesome. I really enjoy it. So who do I get to choose to listen to? Who do you get to choose to listen to? Because no matter what I do, if I change to the people who are complaining, then likely possibility is the people who just loved it will now not love it, right? So that's the thing for you. Only thing that's the easiest thing to be, but the hardest thing to be for most people is truly what is natural to you. What is natural to me is not spending two and a half hours preparing for one of these sessions, not because I'm lazy, my greatest work, and I couldn't explain why in video that you've heard it before, is when I was under pressure and had two or three hours <clears throat> to put an edit together and show that at the wedding, called the same day edit, right? That was my zone of genius. And I had people who for a while made me believe that's ludicrous, that's stupid. Even the couples, why would you like, wouldn't you make a better video if you have more than two hours? And when I didn't know myself, when you don't know yourself, you'll question yourself and your questioning will typically lead you to, I hate to use the word mediocrity, but something that doesn't light you up, that you're just going through the motions because you listened more to those who didn't understand than you did under, learning to understand yourself so that you get to be you, the natural you, the effortless you, the ease you, the fun you, the fulfilling you, the freedom you, the you, 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 right? And so that aspect that when I was questioning, well, do I need more time? Like I was having those thoughts. So when people asked me, think about that. When people said, wouldn't it be better if you had more than two hours edit the video? I'm already questioning, should I spend more time? Would I make a better video? People are also telling me <clears throat> who couldn't do a great video in two hours. So their limitations, other videographers saying, you can't make the best video in two hours. So I've got, I don't know what's right, wrong, indifferent, or anything in between because I've never really done this before. I have this thing I do. I do a really great job. People seem to be happy. And then from two different sides, I got people questioning that I shouldn't do that thing. And it wasn't until I got sick and tired of being sick and tired and effectively was like, gosh, dang it, this is how I produce my best work. So I'm being very aggressive here and way I'm explaining it, but- like I wouldn't be this aggressive with a couple, but basically my internal mode of operandi shifted from maybe you're right. Maybe I, if I had more time, it would be better. And doing all these things that people thought I should do and, and, and said I should do to going, you know what? Couples love my same day edit. Not everybody, but there's plenty that do. I love doing the same day edit. And you know what? When I don't do a same day edit, I don't create great work. I procrastinate. I waste time. I get bored. I'm not excited about it. Like there's a lot of like, if it's going on when I don't do the same day edit. So when I was able to own that and come into my power with that <clears throat> and convey that to people, my business blew up because it's like, this is who I am. If you like my work, this is how I do it. I can't speak for others. If they need two weeks, two months, two years, 200 days, like to make a video great, that's what they need. But I make the best video when I do this. Now, do you think those people wanted to go, yeah, but I think you'd actually make a better video if you had 18 weeks to work on it? No, because no longer did they have any power over me. The question never went away. It wasn't like I all of a sudden found couples who just got it. Like, yes, there were the couples that just got it. 
right? But there was still the couples who had doubt, who didn't have understanding, who didn't have clarity, who didn't have these things. And the only way I overcame that was not by I found all these new people that didn't question me, was because I didn't question me. And by and large, then, even then when people did, my conviction converted them to go, okay, I mean, that's how he makes a great video. We're not going to question it, right? And so it's the same thing with when I chose not to go to college, now that I think about it. Like I had enough conviction with my parents to tell them, right? Give me a year. Like, just let me do this for a year, right? If it doesn't work out, I'll go to college, right? Because any parent overall, you know, they weren't entrepreneurs or whatever. You, you, know, you want to see your parent, your kids succeed. And there was an old paradigm for a long time. You go to college to succeed. So here's a kid that doesn't want to go to college. You know, is he going to fail? Is he going to be a, you know, a loser? Is he not going to make any money? Is he not going to succeed? Right. But had a little bit of progress. And that little bit of progress I had, had me have back then at 19, 18, 19 years old, enough conviction to just talk to my parents and say, I just, let me see where this goes. I didn't want to go to college. I didn't know what else to do. This thing was working a little bit. I'm like, let me see what happens. If in one year it doesn't work out, then I'll stop doing it and I'll go to college. And that was a lot of drive because I didn't want to go to college. But I think there was a lot of proven people wrong back then too, because I had people tell me I wouldn't succeed if I didn't go to film school or I didn't do this or that. And um, so there's that aspect that when you have enough belief in you, enough belief in your dream and your goal and your business and your business model and your idea, people will still and always and forever question you. But when you're, by and large, not questioning self, and you can convey to somebody with an absolute conviction and certainty that I don't know what's going to happen. I don't. Maybe it won't work out. But as Jim Carrey said about his dad, prove to him that you can fail at what you don't want, so you might as well do what you do. Right? Do what you do want. Because no matter what's going to happen, things cannot work out can have your safe job for 30 years and the company lets you go five years before you're, you know, you're going to retire. Like I hear they see these stories all the time. We really don't know. No matter how safe we think something is, we really don't know. We're looking for so much clarity of like, this is what will happen if I do this. That's why if you think of courses that you bought, if any of you came from Sam Cart, Brian Moran sells with absolute certainty and absolute conviction in his webinars that by God, if you buy this, you will succeed. Brian's a friend. He was at my wedding. I've known him for a long time. Overall, I don't have issues with Brian as a whole, as a human, nor I use the software. I've used it since it was in beta in 2014. There's nothing wrong with the software. The way the software is sold is where it goes wrong, right? Sam Carr was a disaster. Right? There's other people who love Sam Carr. I guarantee even on this call, there's people who, who've had great success, but Sam Carr wasn't the reason you had success. Sam card, as I always said, I'm just bringing this up to tie this together. And some won't know it. It's a, it's a tool. It's basically, it allows you to take credit cards, really. At the most simplest level, it allows you to take credit card payment. I won't get into all the semantics. This is not a Sam card call. But it was sold as this end-all, cure-all, magical pill, you know, that was going to, you know, buy this software. And you'll never need any other software. And you're going to make $5,000 a month in 30 to 60 days selling an ebook. And it's like, it's not a lie right? Because it's all people need. This is the problem with marketing, everybody. You only need one. And then people get lots of conviction from one person doing something. So there could be one out of 18,000 people who do that. And there's a lot of variables of how it would have happened that then that is the promise for it to happen for you. And all that needs to be calibrated is your expectation, not that it is or isn't possible, but that it is something that could happen, maybe, maybe not. But when people have so much belief that it will happen, when there's too many variables that are unknown, is the problem. Because usually the one out of 18,000 people that it happened for that now they're using as the testimonial or whatever, and not just Sam Carter or anything else, right, is that they have one person do something 
And then they act like it's the gospel that everyone will get that exact result when they could have gotten it, but maybe it was going to happen six months later, two years later, eight months later, you know, 14 days later than that was the, what was the expectation in somebody's mind. But when there's so much conviction, because most, most of you don't buy things that you don't think are going to do what it says you're going to do, right? There's food that might be horrible for you, but you believe it's not. <laughs> and even the way it's marketed. I mean, think about the commercials that are on TV selling certain pills. Like sometimes the, the problems you're going to get from the pill or might be greater than the problem it's solving, right? But they're smiling and they're all happy. They're like, hey, you know, if you take this, you might have suicidal thoughts and this, that. The other thing you're like, did they just say that with like happy people on the face? Like what, what's going on here, right? So all around us, we're, we're bombarded with people who have conviction. And a lot of people at times who have no heart. It's not people first. Probably one of the reasons I didn't work out there and a couple other people that I tried to work inside their organizations to do things is because I care about you more than I care about continuing to sell whatever the heck is the people I'm helping. That could work great for somebody who is they're a right fit for something because I'm going to help them excel. I'm like rocket fuel for the rocket ship. What's not great is for people who it's not a right fit and should have never bought it to begin with because then they're getting a refund, right? But companies that are metrics and numbers centric and not people don't really care that you're really helping the person. They're going, I don't care about that person. I care about the fact that we got to get our retention up to this number. And there's a bunch of digits and numbers that happen to have human beings behind it. But you can build a business that cares about people. I don't care if you're in a coaching business, an app business, a service business, a, you know, I mean, hell. Like it's as simple as somebody coming to be a handy, handy man or woman, right? There's people you can tell they don't really like what they do or they're just grumpy people. I don't know. And then they're, they're, and they're so like jaded on life and you interact with them and they're just mean. And then there's people who like, it doesn't matter if they're the trash person or anywhere in between, you can just tell that they're going to make the best of whatever situation they're in. That's a formula for success. I'm going to pull on Catherine if she's ready. We good? Rock and roll, rock and roll. Helpful. Appreciate you all so much. I just, I get fired up about this. I love doing this. I love that you show up. You know, I, I'd say, you know, no matter how many people here, the people that do show, uh, I'm really grateful for you. I really, really am because, you know, yes, um, I mean, the bottom line is this stuff lights me up, lights my soul on fire getting to do this. It's something that I feel like I didn't choose it. It chose me. Um, there was a couple of years I just tried to not do this anymore and went back to video. And then that lasted for a couple of years and I just, I couldn't shake it. And so there's something inside that spoke to me to do this work. And uh, the fact that some of you show up week after week. Some of you come for a week and come back six months later and tell some breakthroughs. And some of you, I may never hear from again. Um, but uh, to hear the successes, to hear the wins, to hear the breakthroughs, to hear the ahas, the clarity, and helping people move at whatever speed that they need to move at. Because everybody's, you think of plants, you think of nature, you think of just our observation. There's all different types of cars, colors of cars, engines in cars. There's all sorts of different plants you know, and, 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 and fruits and things that grow and they all grow at different speeds. And, you know, you hear of things, a whole field of things were planted and sometimes they get more fruit than others. Some trees have 20 on it. Some have five, some have 10. You don't know, but you keep planting, you know, you keep planting, you keep watering. And as we started this entire session about the car, if you're a million dollar car, right? Some of you aren't on here, but I said, you know, what happens if you had a million dollar car? Whatever your car is now and however you treat it, would you treat that car better? A little bit better? Would you treat it the same? Or would you treat it a ton more better? Right? A ton more better. That's great English. But a ton more better, right? If you had a million dollar car relative to whatever you have right now, just get into that imagination for a second. Right? And it was that idea that some people like not much better. Now, some people not much better. To Sheena who said that's because she already treats her car metaphorically speaking, meaning her really well. You're the million dollar car. When you start viewing yourself through a lens of like, I'm enough, 
I'm valuable. Like I can do this. I got to put in the time, put in the effort, put in the hours, but it's possible for me. It's not just these special people on earth that are able to have a business or succeed or do what they love, you know, for a living, but it really is possible for all of us. But when we start seeing nature and how there's so many different plants and there's so many different cars, there's so many different engines, there's so many different things that are out there. The more you learn about your car or your fruit or your tree or your plant and who you are, then the more you can recognize that if you had a four cylinder that goes 50 miles an hour, don't be on the NASCAR track. There's other, there's other ways to take your thing and, and succeed and flourish, right? If you're the fish and you, you can't do anything outside of the water, like don't try to be hanging out with the monkeys. And again, some of these metaphors are not so literal, right? But there is those aspects that the more we learn about ourselves, the better circumstances, situations, people, business models, and things that um, we're likely to flourish and win with. I mean, life can be hard enough as it is. We don't need to make it harder. Rock and roll. These things. I was like, a power up. Maybe that'll be my thumbnail if the person finds that. Anywho, Catherine, you want to be on camera today? You said you did. I haven't had somebody on. In a, in, a few, uh, in a few short moments. We'll try it out. Let's see what happens. Um, I, love, I love camera, but uh, if your audio is working, it's all good. It's all good. We'll do the audio. Want to try audio? Let's see how it works for you. If you feel like you're in a good headspace, good place to do it though. I mean, I know that you said your internet or something with the camera might be a little funky, but um, beyond the camera part, you good? Catherine, not Carolina. <laughs> All right, cool. Hello. Hold on. That's it. Are you there? Hello, hello. There you are. All right, good deal. Fantastic. Well, so you just, uh, I can hear you. It sounds like we're good. Um, you sent me an email today and were you on Sam card then? Like what happened that you just found my stuff recently or did you found it before and just didn't pay attention or what, what, what happened there? Yeah, I found it before. And I guess I was on your email list and you sent out an email a week ago. And then I started seeing your videos on Facebook. And then I was like, wait, this is what I need to hear right now. <laughs> so I'm all over it with two feet. Okay, cool. Good deal. Well, so just so I don't, I'm not, I don't have it. I'm not just gonna sit here and read it verbatim since you're here. Like what, from what you have heard, what you resonate with that email, what is the thing that I could kind of like help you with today that you're, you're, if you could get some of it lifted off your shoulders, it would be a big win for you. I think just trying to get some clarity on, okay, I've been a fish trying to climb a tree. So what pond should I be playing in instead? Okay. Um, and there's all of these, start your online business, go be this high powered coach. And there's a part of me that sees, yes, that's a totally viable business model, but there's something deep within me. That's just absolutely recoiling at the entire idea. Mm -hmm. Um, but I love coaching okay. and teaching. So I'm not quite sure where my, um, why it isn't a good fit. Um, I just know, like, I've been dinking around with it for two years now, yeah. trying to figure out how to launch it. And I've got great ideas, but just trying to figure out where I'm going, what yeah. pond I'm playing in. Sure. Um, yeah. And I'm confident that once I figure that out, it's going to take off like jet fuel. Great, great. So let's just play here for a second <clears throat> to the question I asked earlier. If never needed to make money ever again in your entire life, like what activity, like when you get honest with yourself, what activities do you love in the form of like, I got to play with that sometimes because, you know, sometimes it's just like reading books or something. That's all great. But like just activities that could be business things, but just this aspect of things you like to do, like talking, do you like creating curriculum? Do you like, like what do you like? What activity when you do it, do you lose track of time? Do you really enjoy doing? Do you like 
interacting with people. Cause sometimes we like teaching, but we might not really like interacting this way, you know? And so what, what things do you find that you gravitate that you just remove business models and all that out of it right now, but activity wise, you really enjoy doing. So I genuinely enjoy farming and kind of designing farm systems that are ecologically based, okay. but then you know, I like helping people learn how to do it for themselves. Okay. Um, I also, I, I am interested in lots of things. And I mentioned that in the email. Yeah. And so I'm also interested in food is medicine. And I see kind of the cracks between teaching people to grow their own food and being healthier and doing it in an environmentally friendly way. And just for whatever reason in my head, it just feels like and I think this is the outside world telling me mm -hmm. that, no, you can't do it as a blend. You have to do each separate. And I guess what I'm is just the, what afraid is the, to niche separate, down. What is, what is the it, each separate right now that your brain's telling you? What is the two separate? They don't work together. What is the thing you're saying doesn't work together? Um, teaching people to grow their own food and also coaching for uh, nutritional health and food as medicine. And I have a nursing license. And so I'm totally licensed to do that. I know how I can do all of it. Mm -hmm. I just know I can't do all of it at the same time. Okay. And I could be successful at any, and I just allow myself to keep chasing the squirrels of do that, do that, do that. Yeah. Um, so, and go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, what have you, what over the last two years have you been experimenting with or testing and doing that, that isn't, feeling right like what parts of things are you trying to force the square peg round hole or whatever into that keeps not resonating or not exciting you but you feel like well that's the way that everybody tells me i have to do like what's happening there um just the high ticket health coaching okay um the, my license says i should be doing that and you know the that's where the money is and for me like my basic needs are met. Um, but then, you know, I want to generate some more money to help finance some big projects for my farm. And so I want to kind of keep developing and also to help other people, but uh, I just don't know who to help, I guess. So on a day or what, day what I can give. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously what you are saying you know is something that people need i mean that's just what you're saying i mean the you know food is health and, and these different things like the world needs an ability to recognize how powerful you know that's fuel right like i mean it's what i was talking about this day that it's taking care of your vehicle right that's probably where there's a resonance and you're everybody who's on here is viewing that through a different lens so there's a level of like you're getting that on an even deeper level with food right? That idea of refueling yourself, resetting. I might be sometimes thinking, oh, I go for a bike ride or a walk. That's a refueling. You might be thinking, well, having certain types of food and a certain diet and how like, you know so much more than, than I do, but there's that aspect where we all need these different types of people who are sharing things that quite frankly, um, come from a place of, I, I, I think that what I've found that the people who seem to resonate with me is because they're by and large people who uh, are less motivated by just business, commerce, and money. Like that's the first motivation. Like obviously we know that if we don't do anything with commerce, which has been a thing I've done in the past at times, we're like, I do a bunch of things and I'm very fulfilled. I'm very happy and I'm liking what I'm doing. But then I don't wrap it in any container to earn any money from. And this happened a lot when I, before I transitioned over to coaching full-time is like, I held an event in 2018. And so my time of the year where at this point in my career with video, that was the busiest was about March, Fe late February, March through maybe July. So in January, I had this bottle rocket idea that I was going to hold this local event. And within 30 days, uh, I was, I mean, in the newspaper, I did a bunch of lives. Like I did all these things to promote this local free event. I called it dreamers, doers, and entrepreneurs. And, um, and I thought maybe eight, eight, I had done something in 2012. So this is 2018. Now it was a big gap between this type of thing locally. 
I thought, well, I got about 80 people that one time. Maybe I'll get about another 80 to 100 people. And about 215 people came to that event. And the whole month, the event, I really had a blast. Month two, um, I still wasn't traveling, didn't have anything else going on. So I spent about three of those weeks promoting another one. And I had about 180 people show up. Then I started to travel, started to have work for the thing that was making me money, which was my video production at the time. So then month three, I hold an event. I maybe promoted a week or two, not quite three weeks. And I had about 80 people show up. The fourth one I held, I basically got the venue, put a Facebook event up and did zero promotion. I was like nonstop traveling, go, go, go. And I just didn't have any time to do any of the things I was doing prior when I had all the time. So it showed me the power of focus versus the, like, I don't even know if people knew that the thing was still happening because I could get in my head, well, was it just, you know, people weren't interested, they didn't like it or whatever, but it's like, I did nothing to even stay top of mind. And I didn't have the date even ready at the one that would be prior either. So that all the people showing up, because the way my brain worked or whatever. But anyways, that last one, I had like 15 people. What's interesting is the whole time I had this thing, well, I don't want to sell anything and I don't want to promote anything because I don't want, I want people to not think that, because this is what I thought because of all these events I went to and I was trying to be different. I thought all these events you go to, people always selling you something, right? You come and they, my view of these people was they didn't care about the people if they did that. This is my view. So then I'm like, I don't want to be those people. And so what happens? Free event. I had people say exactly what I hoped at the end of the event. They're like, oh, the very first one. They're like, wow, like I thought I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the, what's the, what's the catch here? This guy's holding this free event. He's got to be a catch. And they're like, there was no catch. There was nothing, you know? And I'm, yes, I did. <laughs> I'm viewed as like the saving grace. Like I'm holding this thing. Yeah, but I did nothing to make money. I, I made money evil. I made money a bad thing. I made me a bad person if I would have charged anything or sold anything. Well, guess what? I didn't make any money. So therefore I had to make money to live. So I had to go do something else. And this was the interesting thing that kind of came full circle with, I think for anybody that's listening, that's coaches. I just had a conversation with somebody about this today. Now there's a fine line on this and how it can be interpreted, but um, at times you, we see a couple different variations of coaches. Sometimes there's coaches, which is where I was at to a degree, which is um, when I, I first stopped is like, I did not help people. I cared about people and everything else, but I wasn't practicing all that I was preaching. It was like, I'm having these struggles. Let me overcome them by coaching people. <laughs> like I was not aware of any of this, by the way, but it was kind of what was happening. And so I wasn't doing the work on myself and what I was projecting that others should do or think or whatever, like I wasn't even doing yet. Like, and so there was that aspect, there was kind of this fraudulent thing. So that aspect where like working through those, those things of, of there's nothing wrong with selling something at, at, at the event or even had been selling the tickets. That wouldn't have been a reflection of me. It would have been the reflection of other people thinking that I'm a bad person because I sold something. But that doesn't mean that I was because I had to stop helping the community because I didn't make any money. And what I found was is back in the day in 2016, when I stopped trying to make any money off coaching entirely, is that. I was helping, well, let me go back to 2018 for one second. At the end of those events, when I held it, I went into this, like, I started getting very emotional. I was like, it was a mess because I was, I knew what I liked doing and I was doing some of it, but then I'm sitting here trying to help people like do what they love for a living while literally I was sitting here because of all my BS having to go do things I didn't love while I'm helping people do what they love. Like I would literally have friends. I didn't charge. Like the first people I charged when I, in 2019, well, 2020 was the year I became like, that was the last time I've made any money off video, but 2019 when I started charging again and the first people I charged for coaching were my friends because I realized that there was a container I wasn't giving them. I learned this from another person um, I know this is, you said this is what you love. So I, I, I have something I'll read here before the end that will be helpful as well. Um, but what I realized in this particular time, I was helping some of my videographer friends and they would come to me and be like, what should I do on this? And in 30 minutes, I'd look it over and they were going to charge two grand and they end up charging eight. Now that's 6,000 more than they were going to charge without an interaction with me. They could have given me 
4,000 of that. And it was, they still made more money than they were going to make on their own. Now, I didn't ask for anything. It's like, oh, they're my friend. Why would I do that? Like, I care about them. And it was as if charging or anything had this, like, I don't care about them, or I'm a bad person, or I'm not a good friend. But what I found is, is that I was helping them live their dreams and live them better and more and make more money while I wasn't doing that for myself because doing video anymore wasn't my dream. And I didn't want to do it. And that's when I got real emotional late 2018 and broke down on the phone a number of times to people. Um, and I just stopped entirely again because uh, I didn't try to make money from that. But this one person said, you're going too fast. Imagine a car again. Like at times we're moving so fast and we're trying so hard to make something work. But that's like driving 100 miles an hour trying to enjoy the scenery. The town I live in, 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 in Illinois here is about 28,000 people. I've lived here my whole life and now have lived here. I still live here. But I almost moved about four or five years ago. And I started walking around the town. I started seeing things that I hadn't seen before. So I slowed down. And there's this aspect that at times, like right now, you potentially, which is something to think about, how many people, ads, newsletters, things are you following that are still reinforcing these old paradigms, these old thoughts, these old things that are having you kind of in this paralyzed state of, of not knowing, do you bring any value? Is this thing of any worth? And there's already plenty of people doing it, or I shouldn't do it and not knowing what to do or feeling like these, what I found is so much dissonance and not resonance with the way people were teaching me to, to show up. Like with such from a lack standpoint, like I'm a giver. There's a lady I want you, because this lady said this today or not today, but her name's Simone Soul. I've brought her up before um, to speak into my soul, <laughs> but she wrote this. And this is what I love this because you even just said two years. Now, mind you, 2020, 2021 was the first year I made 100% of my revenue from doing what I'm doing today. I got paid for the very first time to do this in 2010. I made close to zero money for seven years since I started my business, then shot up millions of dollars in revenue in the last three years. She was selling $48 tarot card readings in 2019, by the way. Many people think I'm a dramatic overnight success story. I'm not. My brain is like a race car that took seven years to build. Once built, it shot forward like a bullet. That's why I never buy into the sad stories of coaches who aren't seeing their businesses take off year after year. Where you see failure and hopelessness, I see an elite race car being built. Where, you're, where you get stuck in frustration, I see God fine-tuning a vehicle with the kind of beauty and power the world hasn't seen yet. If you don't, that's okay. But I'm not going to sit here and agree with your self-pity, and I'm not going to pretend like it's wise when you say, see, if it was going to work, it would have worked already, and try to abandon the car. And I had so many times for myself that I wanted to give this up. I had spent, you know, 16 plus years in video production. My parents and everybody saw clearly success there. I was talented, traveled the world, worked with big people. I brought in over six figures a year. Like I had built something that most would envy. And I was in the top 5% of income earners, right? And then I'm going to do this thing that, I didn't have a track record of success, wasn't working. Like I had all these things that I'm like, what is going on? I had all this success here. Why isn't it immediately transferring over? And seeing that, I mean, that's one of the recent things I've done an enormous amount of work, but I, I think it's an a, incredible analogy because there's so much when we're in our own vehicle and we're doing the tweaking, but we don't really know what we don't know, or we don't have what we're talking about today, which is someone believing in us or being able to say, say that to you to say, whoa, 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 two years, like, I'm not saying it's going to take 20, but at the same time, I, I've used the bamboo story before that Les Brown talks about bamboo. And I just talked to a buddy about it. He's like, yeah, we had bamboos. And once you plant one, like, it's like 50 of these suckers and they just don't stop growing. And we took them all out of the ground and they kept coming back. But like, they could take up to four or five years before they break out of the surface. And then they grow like 90 feet in like five months. The problem is we don't know what, what we are. We don't know for grass, you know, grass, you can plant grass seed and it grows. And like, if it's in the right area, it's not winter time, like you can grow in like a couple of days and you see it and now it's all there. Right. Or if we're a bamboo tree or an avocado, like we don't know. Cause we, we spend so much time. And this is why I'm so bullish on the self-understanding, self-tuning, self-awareness, because everybody that we're typically buying from are not coaches either. They're not like true people that understand humans 
They're marketers. They know what buttons to push to get you to buy with conviction a system that is going to have you think if you just do X, Y, Z, A, B, C, it works for everybody with a pulse. And the reality is, I'm not saying a lot of these things are actually bad and don't work. A lot of them I do believe work, but to the degree that we understand self is where you're resonating because there's that aspect that you're like, they're blaming you. That happens a lot. I mean, one of the people I work for, like, well, that's all their fault. Why then? It's not our fault. Now, granted, I get like the work I do sharing something with you, you stop to go do things. I'm not making phone calls with you. It's kind of like losing weight. Like I can't do the sit-ups for you. So you lose the weight. But I think that the thing I'm finding is there's less people who are resonating with building people like me slash us that are on this probably call today into their organizations, because that means they'd have to, in the short term, potentially lose money to gain over the long term. So I had to even lose money in coaching over the short term to gain, or excuse me, not lose money with coaching, but lose money in general to do what I really feel like I'm called to do. Is that always necessary? Not necessarily. But like when I split my focus, so for you right now, question I want to ask you is, you know, where do you primarily, like from things you watch and things you do daily, where do you spend the majority of your time right now? Is it on your farm? Like, how are you currently making money? Right now, I'm my husband's getting retirement. And so that's covering all of our bills. Okay, great. Um, but that's not necessarily sustainable to keep the farm going. Um, so it's, you know, the farm can sustain itself but there's infrastructure that I want to add and, you know, things I want to make better and that all takes money. Sure. Um, and so right now that's what I'm doing, but there is capacity within my day to add stuff. Um, but it's not going to be a 40 hour a week job. It's going to be 20 hours a week. Um, and so I think what I'm getting most out of today is that Genuinely, it's okay for me to be me and my wonderful geeky self. Great. And go fly with that. And I don't have to follow the glitter and hot pink logos and yeah. everything else that just yeah. isn't me. Yeah. Um, awesome. And see who just resonates with me as I am and what I give. Beautiful. And that that following will happen. But yeah, maybe I am a redwood that is the oldest tree on the planet, but it takes a really long time to get there. Right. And, and, and that's so beautiful. I'm super happy for you because that that's the greatest gift you can give yourself right now. Right. It's so using the stories that I give of some of these things where people say these things like, you know, my being goofy and, and you know, whatever, and mess up my hair, like these things that I wouldn't do in the past, you know, I would just be like, Hey, everybody, you got all right. Like I wouldn't even as an example, do that in the past. You know what I mean? Like, I would just be like, I'm always so serious. And I would just speak very seriously. And, um, you know, it's just, I'm not hiding. Like there's not like lot. I'm not like sitting here. That's where the imposter sometimes it's like, if you're being the hot pink, literary da, 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 let me do this and that, that they're telling me to do that. I don't really agree with, but that's what you're supposed to do. There's going to be this high level of imposter syndrome going on because you're waiting to get found out of who you really are. And, and when we view ourselves through a really shitty lens, we're really scared of that being found out. But I don't have much of anything that I'm really worried anymore about being found out. Like I used to, part of that thing with coaching before is like, you know, I never talked, like some people are like, wow, I've never guessed that you had all that debt and you almost went bankrupt. Because I never ever, I hid it from almost every single soul in my life outside of my, like maybe my mom and dad and my wife. Like no one knew I had a, a money problem or an issue there. And so that was one of those like, you know, I'm talking about business things and this and that. And I mean, right now, I mean, people see me through this. I've done all these things like, and, but that always felt off, but I was so scared to be found out. Right. And, and to have people find out that, well, yeah, I did. I wasn't lying. I just left that out of it. And it wasn't, I wasn't teaching people how to, it wasn't though that I was teaching people how to save money either. And like, I hope they don't know I don't have any money. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't doing that. Even today, my number one thing 
in a lot of ways is that regardless of your bank account, you can find a level of peace, right? So um, because I've had things, you know, in the last year or two where because of the transition that I've been going through and some of my, uh, my indecisiveness, specifically with how I want to run the business part of it, um, you know, that hurts some income. But like my ability to know that I'm happier today, this is genuine. Like I'm not, I'm not saying this is like a facade or anything, but like genuinely happier, regardless of where my bank account is and the conversations I can have with my wife, regardless of where the bank account is. Whereas like, if, if the bank account wasn't good, I'd be scared to death to like, like I was making, I can't disclose that number necessarily, but I was making some really good money with Sam cart. And when I, and I wasn't putting a lot of effort into doing anything else to get money. And I had some, I had some clients, but I wasn't, I was like, I'm good. I'm happy. Life is great. Like, and then when that got taken away, that was an enormous chunk of my current money. That was also unexpected. The old me would have been scared shitless to tell my wife. I would have lied, white lied, you know, whatever, like this whole like innocent lie to like, I don't, I don't want her to know. She's going to be scared. What are we going to do? Oh my gosh. And like within 30 minutes, minutes of getting off the call and whatever, going upstairs and telling her, she's like, great. Now you're ready to do what you're meant to do. Like, but that took a lot of work for the two of us. Um, but this idea of you being you is like, you don't have to, to hide. You don't have to hope people actually find out the truth. And the truth is, eh, it's not that, you're not that special, right? Because that's not the truth. Like you have an angle, the nerdy, you see, I love that language because it can be looked through derogatory. I'm a nerd. I'm a loser. Like you just, when you hear nerd, you hear loser. Sometimes you hear these things, right? But like, there's also nerds who like uh, freaking where the hell is the guy? I'm gonna look him up on Instagram right now. I, I see how big he is. I know. I can't remember the guy's name, but there's a company that comes specifically to mind right, right out of the gate here. It's about 47,000, but I know that there he is. Steve Cam. Uh, I know some people who know this guy, multi-million dollar business, nerd fitness, right? Like he's not like, Hey, we're full of losers here that all suck at life. And we're not, I have no value for the world to bring. Right. It's like nerd fitness. Like there's this confidence behind. So all things can have a negative. If you want to view it through that lens, derogatory or a positive on certain levels. And so that ability for you to own who you are, how you look, how you love, how you teach, how you, you know, uh, do your life and the way that you've done things on a farm and the way that you can educate people, like do the opposite. I love that word, eccentric, right? That, that, that ability to be different and own that is fine. Like that, that is what will help you win. And it, it, it feels so uncomfortable because a lot of us haven't been in our skin, like our own skin for a long time. So there's that whole like little like coming out phase, you know, that, that quite frankly is, can be very difficult, but I know that it has been one of the most liberating and freeing things for me to just be able to let the goofy side of me out, the quirky side of me out, the serious side of me out, the, um, all sides of me out overall, you know, I mean, overall, the only things I really don't share is when I have private people in my life who don't want their stories, stories shared. And then I try to sometimes manipulate names and things because they're private and they don't want it shared. But I'm a pretty doggone open book by and large because I wish more people, and I've been told this many times, but I'm doing what I wish I could have received more. I wish there was more people who didn't stand on a mountaintop and were telling me kind of where they're at and what's going on and how they're working through it and how they overcame that. Like everybody's always just like, I've gotten through everything. Now I'm on a mountain and I don't have any problems. And then what I saw because of my background in filming video production events for people is sometimes that was true. What they saw is what they got and they were great people and what you sell is what you got. And then there was a the people who like stood on their mountain, you know, in their stage with 500 people and then they're backstage, you know, telling people how they can use Facebook ads. And they're like, oh, well, we just, you know, we made $20,000 profit and spent 800 grand in ads. And I'm like, no wonder I'm talking to these people in the, in the hallways and they're like lost of why they're not succeeding. Like you're making it sound like this is what's possible. And then you're doing something completely different. No wonder there's, you know, all struggling. Um, so I just wanted to be what I couldn't find. And so you have that ability to know that there is no real right or wrong way, a way that you pick and a decision that you make. Um, as I've seen in business now, like there's a lot of ways to make it work. It's just to the degree that you actually will be, this has been my biggest downfall, which is consistency. 
doing something, and this is a practice that I'm genuinely working on right now, like my your daily jump start, just using that for you right now. Like they're for other people, yes, that want to help other people 100 percent But part of the way I'm approaching it right now is developing a habit. I'm literally because I've done videos before and I've done things for a few weeks and then I stop. And so I'm, I'm going, this is something I want the result. I want the impact it can have on people. I want it to have longevity. I want, you know, I have old YouTube videos that were from 2014 that still get views today. But then I stopped from like 2016 to almost present day and almost didn't upload anything. And so now I go, but I want that result. I love helping and putting things out there. I'm creating things like this, but um, they'll die if I'm left to be the one doing all the other things so that they don't just die. So that this Zoom isn't the only thing that, that this content from today doesn't just die here with the 10 or 12 people on the call, right? And then it's just over and that's it. I know that there's so much value in this that it can be, some of this can come together and be in an email that, that that's how you found that, right? Like, but that's the thing, right? Like, I think I've sent two emails in six months. And this just happened to be one that you resonated with the message. But imagine if there was messages coming through on a regular basis, kind of like my Your Daily Jumpstart. Like I recognize the value in it, but I recognize that outside of me hitting record and being on here and being myself and all that, there's a lot of things that to make that part come to fruition, I know how to do, I can do, I'm capable of, but by and large, I won't do consistently. Like I just, it, it, it's the fish. It's like, I'm out of water and I'm doing those things. I can do them. And then I'm like, I can't breathe and I'm almost dead. And for other people, they're not, but for me, this is how I gain energy. And so you have to know that for you, what, what ways for you to bring life to what you want to teach or what you want to coach on, or what you want to help people with in what ways are most resonant with you to start to share, uh, information and share things. And up front, can you just you don't need money right now. I believe it's a beautiful place to build from because yes, you want to make money and whatever, but like if you can truly be at a place where if you didn't make any money for a while, like it'd be okay, then then do exactly too many people who need money make a lot of decisions that end up having a business they also don't like because they got a warm body in front of them who's willing to pay them to do something before they know it, they build a whole business with a bunch of clients doing work they don't like to do, which is just the equivalent of the job they didn't like. So because you don't need it, just start experimenting. But your first step, I mean, if I was wanting to learn from you right now about what you talked about, is there anything of any regularity or any consistency or just in general anything that I could go to or anybody even on this call could go to? So you could share a URL, a website, a YouTube, an Instagram. Uh, right now, it's mostly on Facebook. Okay. So I have three Um one is uh, KD, as in dog, health solutions. Okay. And then one, one is sustainable sustenance. And that one is mostly about growing your own food. Um, and the one that honestly, I have the most fun with is uh, how not to die homesteading. Um, okay. And I really just did that for fun. Um, and so I'm really, right now I'm like, why don't I just throw them all into one spot and go. just do you. it? And um, yeah, because so, it can be really difficult from a business standpoint, it's not impossible. But when we're, if you're not incredible at delegation and getting help, meaning there's other people doing things when you're not doing it, then when we're focused on this business over here, but there's also zero people working on this other thing, then it's, it's, I mean, you, you know, like you can't <laughs> being a farmer, right? Like there might be, and you know, this way better than me, right? There are probably some things that need very little attention. Is that true? Like they don't take <laughs> lots of, or attention. it's seasonal. And so it's a big flurry for a short amount of time. And then the rest of the year, it's super boring. Sure. But then there's things that need a lot of care and maintenance to make sure that those things will grow and flourish. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the things that need a lot of time and attention to grow and flourish. If you didn't give it any of that attention or you didn't pluck the weeds, like what'll happen? Will, will it grow and flourish if you're to pay no attention to it? No. And I think one of the other quotes I saw recently was that if you keep planting seeds and then rip it up before it's established roots and then That's plant good. a new seed, 
of course, nothing's going to grow. Yes, that's a beautiful quote. I love that. It's so true, right? And that's where the problem is we get these metaphors like that, like you being a farmer and, and understanding those things. Like it's just, of course, right? But then what happens is from business, it's like, we're doing the opposite of that. So we have these three separate entities and then family and kids and all. And it's like, we're diluting all day, every day, because, you know, a Richard Branson, who I've mentioned before, yeah, he can have 300 companies. He's not running 300 companies. Like he's not in the nitty gritty every day. You know, he's not Virgin Airlines. He's not on every flight where he's like, Hey, here, welcome to Virgin. Like, you know, and then trying to take the order of the ticket and hand, like he, that's not how things work. And so sometimes when we're building a business, we're watering one for like three weeks. And then, like you said, you're ripping up the thing and you go over here and replant. And it's just, it's difficult to expect results when we're constantly, most things that we're going to, especially a business we're going to build, it needs attention. It just does. And so the more you can say these things work together, but people do it all the time. The only people who don't, I believe, overall believe it can't be done because there are some things that God, there's foods that get created where people said, oh, that would be horrible together. I've seen some people, I'm like, they tell me what it's made of. And like, that sounds horrible. And then you eat it and you're like, dang, never thought that would be good. Right. So it takes the, that ability for people like yourself to have that courage to say, screw what all these people are thinking. Cause that's not working anyways. And go, my throwing in the towel moments have been my biggest moments, which is like, I'm fed up with doing it this way that other people are telling me I should, which is why my biggest preaching of my whole message is your ability to create your life your way or a my way decision. Like, here's how I do it. You just did it here. Now it's follow through, right? It's, it's, it's your ability to go, what are you having the most fun with? What do you like doing the most? Mission it together and going, this is who I am, right? This is, this is, this is what I bring to the table and starting to ignore a lot of the stuff that um, doesn't excite you. I just believe things don't get built well when we start to charge it with, I don't really want to do that. I don't know, but I got to do it. Like, and we're like shooting and forcing ourselves to do it versus um, enjoying it. And so there's things you enjoy, there's things you like, and there's things you've been told that don't work together. And I would say everything you've said to me thus far can most definitely work together. And, um, and then allowing that, that you only use the word nerd is the only one I could use, but nerd quirky, you know, woman to, to just shine in all your glory, but that's going to take practice. I don't know if you've seen the video of me at 18 years old, but it definitely wasn't what I'm, how I am today. So to the degree that you've, do you like being on camera? I mean, you don't have your camera today. So, but do you like camera? You prefer audio? Like what ways do you see yourself sharing your message? I really enjoy writing. Um, and that I, I like that process. I'm not afraid of camera and I can travel and upload video um, to a, a, cause I live so far out, but I can go to an area where there's video, uh, an ability to upload videos. Yeah. Um, but I just, I really enjoy writing. Um, but I think video definitely has potential as well because I can show people what I'm saying. And that's so much easier than trying to describe it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's that ability up front though. Then do you have people that you see that do anything remotely like you're doing or teaching or YouTube channels? Are there people that you watch from time to time? Yeah. Well, kind of independently, like I see some gardening ones and then I see some health ones and then I see some homesteading ones, but they're not all together. And this is, what it feels to me like a fairly unique combination, Great. which I guess is what a niche is. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of follow them independently. What I found is, is I was just talking to a buddy today is allowing people to self-select. So right now, you know, I've been having conversations where behind the scenes, because of my background, I had primarily initially attracted lots of people who were basically videographers. Then honestly, it was Sam Cart. And even though on Sam Cart, when I did polls, I did a bunch of polls. There was a wide variety of people. There was app businesses, there was authors, there was, you know, selling drill bits, selling physical products. Like there was a lot of different types of people. Yet I just had the same message. <laughs> like I did what I'm doing today, but I did it in Sam Cart overall, right? 
And uh, yet the people out of that self-selected and the majority of them that did, I would call the healers, the coaches, the consultants. Those are the people who ended up resonating, but I didn't call them out. I didn't say, Hey, Michael, I'm Michael Gavin. I help coaches and consultants and uh, healers, you know, do the thing. It was like, I had a message and that message is resonating with certain types of people. So there are uh, different types of people who are listening to me. Like with my video, my niche became, yes, I primarily started to work with certain people, but that was not fully like by design. Uh, but the reality was my buddy came up with business brand or bride. It was really my style that became my niche, not whom I did it for. So I, because I got into the speaker thought leader space and started getting referrals there, that's who I work for a lot. But that business brand or bride line, it's like, it didn't matter who you were. If you came to me at a certain point in my career, when I was clear, when you came to my company, as long as you paid the rates and were satisfied with the way we were going to do things, and we had that, that certain style of work, we'd film your birthday party for five grand. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and I'd approach it like we approached the Tony Robbins event. Like it didn't matter who we were shooting for. We had a certain way of shooting, a certain way of editing, a certain way of picking out music, getting shots. Like that was more my style. And the reason a certain niche like happened was just that's who I started to resonate and work with and referrals came from. But that wasn't like uh, why I succeeded. I believe why I succeeded initially is because I ended up saying, this is who I am. This is what I do. And if you don't fit into that, then I'm not your guy. So like people who wanted things that I could do, like in the beginning, I did anything for everybody. When I really blew up was when like my style is what I was like very confident. And so for you, that idea where you're like, there's this, you know, triple threat here that overall nobody's doing together because maybe their skills, people who do that, they don't have those loves right now, but that doesn't mean they don't intersect and they don't work together. Cause I understand very little about some of the stuff that you're, like homesteading and things like that. But yet the little that I do, I don't see why they don't have intersections and can't, you know, work together in your unique story and your unique blend. And then there's, you're going to find likely that there's a lot more people that exist out there who will resonate with that. Um, Cause what I find when there's things that we don't see a lot, it doesn't mean it won't work. It just simply means that it's certain points people don't have. Cause I still think things I'm like, I'm blown away that, that there's anything new that can pop up, <laughs> but yet there's somebody because of these unique spins of a, a lawyer who was a, who worked at a, like I saw this one guy wrote a book called the trash man to the cash man. You know, you know he, he, part of his story is for a little bit, he was a, you know, worked for a trash company, you know, but like, so there's all these combinations, but there was a book called body of work by Pam Slim. And the, the basis of that book is that everything you do makes you who you are today, but there's by and large, no reason for you to throw things in the trash. Now, for me, I don't want to shoot video anymore, but it doesn't mean that I can't bring a lot of value from that background or unique stories. Like, right, my understanding of seeing the personal development world through a lens that most will never see. Because I'm not just at the sitting buying a ticket sitting in the audience, but rather I'm actually behind the scenes at the VIP parties and talking to the people and seeing them, you know, when they're when there's not the, the audience there, right? And so most people are never gonna get that angle. So there's there's a whole my whole background. It's not like which I thought for a while. I did all this video production for all these years, like trash can, dump that. Well, that was with I mean, it was a great time while it was, but now all that's useless with what I want to do today. And that's how I used to think honestly, until people like what I'm doing for you and everybody listening started to change that perspective and see how, you know, all of that makes me have that unique spin to bring things to the world. Like that race car story I read earlier, right? That you're just building a special vehicle right now that uh, is unique, right? The, 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 the hardest part right now is to actually just do what everybody's doing because the people with all the college degrees and all the things that are just fit in a box, struggling. It's the people who have the courage to go outside of that box and allow all these different layers to combine that are actually having people, you're sticking out more because otherwise you just look like everybody else. And if you're not, if you're, you know, the 18,000th person doing it and, and the world at large doesn't see any different, why don't I just go with the person who's been doing it for 18 years rather than you who's been doing it for 18 days, right? And that's what happens with all these like expert businesses that pop up with people overnight is they're just emulating websites, emulating everything, 
It's like, why do I, and you can tell you're like, oh, they must have followed X, Y, Z. And then it's like, why don't I just go to X, Y, Z then? Why am I going to them? And that's things I used to thought. But then once you recognize you have these unique stories, unique spins, the nerd, the quirky, the eccentric, and you let those things out and you're not trying to be a person you're not and fit in their box and be a crappy ass version of that because that's not who you are, right? Versus nobody can be the combination of your life experience to teach and coach on the topics and in the way that you're going to, rather than feeling like you got to be like other people. So I think that's probably a pretty good place to, how are you feeling after that relative to finding the jump starts, the email responding to me and look at here you are today on the, on the call. So that's pretty cool. It's been great because I think we're a huge part where I've been stuck for the last year is that everybody says, start with your niche, find the person you're speaking to and then find their language and then speak to them using their language like that's the standard teaching from all the coaches it's free cheaper that fifteen thousand dollar program that's what they're teaching you (laughs) yeah and uh, like that's just not me at all and i think what you're saying is just so it's such a huge relief i am just yeah it's like the huge weights lifted yeah. off right now and I can't wait to get started and now suddenly it's going to be fun again uh, I feel that way because it, it my brain seeing so much of that there's been an unlearning for me as well because I can get so analytical so critical I have all those events that I filmed for a decade like being around that environment that you're talking about for a decade like it implanted things that I still find myself going Oh, go away. <laughs> like throw it in the trash, get away from me. Like that's not me. It doesn't resonate and it doesn't work for me. Uh, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just simply doesn't work for me, but that doesn't mean that it's the only way. And I think there's so much of that. They speak with so much conviction and they get people to believe that their way is the only way. And um, they're not wrong. Those things can work, but most people are paralyzed by doing that. Most people actually find that in reverse order, meaning the people who have the cojones to go out and do things, broad strokes, try lots of things, do lots of things, end up finding where that thing they're talking about there is. But too many people are being taught to do that from square one. And then they don't know. They genuinely don't know. And so then it paralyzes them from ever really doing anything. And they don't take any action, which to me, action creates clarity. I'm going to read this for you real quick. And everybody on here read it to my buddy today. This guy named, uh, there's a book. It's a great group of people. I'm not as good at the, uh, the Facebook group stuff. There's a, a group called the Ultimate Coach Facebook group. This is a book by Steve Hardison. I got to do some coaching with him. And he has this thing that when I did the session with him back in um, May 18th of last year, on my flight back, literally just flowed out of me what I'm about to read to you. And I just typed it out. And he has a thing like this that he listens to every day, reads every day. Like, I mean, if, if you saw him and you asked him who he is, what I'm about to read you, because I haven't fully like, I don't, I don't have it memorized. I don't say it all the time. I don't even read it yet all the time. Um, but he has embodied these words and they're not, my words are not his words. These were the ones that just flowed out of me on a version of knowing what, you know, what kind of he did with this thing. So I put, I am powerful catalytic energy, intuitive, loving, inspiring, and connected to infinite intelligence. I'm the only one responsible for my life. And I always take responsibility for my life. I am the answer. And the answer is always within. I lead by example. And my example leads. I know that what I say is what needs to be said in any moment because spirit speaks through me. I flow through life and life flows through me. I experience daily a life of peace, ease, joy, and abundance. I create my life and my life creates me. I do not judge and I do not complain. There is nothing I can't do if I put, uh, can't not do if I don't put my mind to it and take uh, massive and perfect action. I create clarity through action. So for me, that has been a thing. I wanted to get to that point. And this is when in doubt, take an action. Like for me, I have, condition myself overall to know that the greatest clarity I ever gain is by doing something, not just thinking about it. And if I get, and I catch myself and I have been there many times too much in my head paralyzed because someone's made me believe, or I allow them to make me believe 
that there is one way to do something. And when that way doesn't feel right, doesn't resonate, doesn't whatever, and I don't choose to act, then I just end up stuck in the mud, right? And you know, anybody who's been stuck in the mud and then just keeps flooring the thing into the ground just digs a deeper hole. Um, so I create clarity through action. When in doubt, take an action. There is no right and there is no wrong. There only is what is. The answer is always no, unless you ask. And I always ask. I have no doubts. I have faith and trust that everything is always working out. I accept that whatever happens in my life, there is a lesson to be learned. And I will handle whatever happens with grace. I share what I learned so that others can grow and learn. I tune up hearts and minds so that ideas don't die and hearts, heads, and hard drives. I unconditionally love my wife, my beautiful, intelligent, inspiring wife, Jessica. She is the most special person in my life, and I treat her as such. I am a miracle. Life is a miracle. Every day I create miracles. I am Michael Gebbin, and I love you. Now, imagine that not all of that may be fully true. I'm a human, but I'm living into that each and every single day more and more, where I trust that what I'm saying to you is the, is the thing that needs to be said that'll get through to you. That's something that I, I do my best to practice and embody. So that idea that my best way to help Catherine, you right now, and anybody else who may be listening, but is to just trust that the way I say it and what I say is coming from love. And it's, it's the right thing to say at this moment in time versus questioning, should I say that? Will I offend her? Was she gonna like me? I don't know if I should say that. Like all these things that I used to do, I just say, and guess sometimes people are like, man, you're way off. Like, I don't know what, that, I, that doesn't resonate at all. But that doesn't happen very often anymore because I'm trusting myself and have built that process to realize where I'm coming from, know myself. And if somebody says that and they come back at me, I can share it differently. And usually it ends up resonating because I'm not looking to be right. I'm simply looking to have what you just had happen. That's it. And you're going to have that maybe through food, you know, and through the, the things that you do and your overall life experiences are going to have you share with people in a way that they're like, you're a breath of fresh air. I'm so happy I found you because maybe the way you're going to teach through this special combination will be just what quote unquote, the doctor ordered, right? And exactly, exactly what somebody who's out there right now needs your way of doing it. And they're tired of the normal way that's been taught so many ways. And so for you to get out there and start to experiment, like right now, I wouldn't even think too much about business. I would just think about playing with this new you that's gonna teach maybe in a different way and just let things flow and just experiment and play. Like me right now, I'm not getting too headstrong on anything with the Your Daily Jumpstart. Like I started it with Miracle Monday, Tuesday tune-up. And I was calling it these days and thinking, oh, I'll just talk about miracles every Monday. Like, and I did three days like that. And I'm like, no, that's not going to work. And I was trying to do it at 9 a.m. Like, no, nah, that's not going to work. So I just, I went and go, I just want to do it. I'll pick a topic and I'll jam on it for 15 minutes. And then I'll by and large stop. And that felt right. So I pivoted right in the moment. Like I didn't have to go, yes, it has to be on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 9 a.m., Miracle Monday, Tune Up Tuesday, Winning Wednesday. Like that was so confining. And yet there's people who teach those kind of things. You need to have themes on the, on the days of the week. You need to do that. But if I don't do it regularly, then it doesn't matter. And so the only way I'm going to do something regularly is to find something that works for me that I'm having fun doing. And so I'm excited for you. I'm excited. I'm glad. I'm glad you reached out. And more than anything, I'm glad you freaking showed up today and uh, and and we're willing to get on on audio here and share. So that was super awesome. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. I, yeah, I'm so excited to just go play. Like you said, <laughs> uh, I, I'm already like, oh, I could do a video when I'm out with the goats. And okay, good. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Good, good. That's it. That's the place. And then what you have to watch and I'll end on this is like, there are going to be things likely that will come that will want to knock you off of that. And just anchor back into this moment because the only thing that will have this not work is if you don't work it. That's my truest belief this. As long as you keep working it, experimenting and playing and doing it and moving forward and making some level of progress. You might have days you don't do it, whatever. that's fine. It's not about the bumps in the road. It's just, they're not craters. that <laughs> have you go into stall mode and like, put your car in park and keep it in the garage, right? Like put the tractor, like, oh, the tractor doesn't work. Who cares? Like, and you just don't do anything, 
right? It's just that idea right now, just playing, experimenting, and you'll find your voice. I mean, the mind mechanic, tuning up hearts and minds one at a time. When I hear you, I can help you. It came through doing and playing and coaching and helping. And then like the things popped up. So right now, like the name of what you might call this togetherness and these things It'll just come, but just get out there with that energy you have and just start recording, playing and, and releasing it, not really worrying about, I mean, heck, don't even worry about really where it's fully being released and it's optimized because right now you're just building the habit. You're getting out there with this energy, you're playing with it, you're doing things and experimenting. You can get more strategic or whatever at times later, but right now it's to take that energy and just, like you said, play. So Catherine. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I think it's going to be great. Good. I, I'm excited to come back next week and tell yes. you what I did. Please. I would love that. I would love that. Please keep me posted. I would love to hear, hear your update. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys for letting me talk today. Thank you for sharing. Super awesome. Whoa. There we go. Awesome. Great. Fantastic. Good stuff. Awesome, 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 awesome. Thank you, Catherine, for sharing today. That was great. I love, I love, you know, I love new. Uh, I love having somebody I haven't interacted with and being able to, those first moments, you know, I, I've realized that through the years that one of the things I have the most fun with, I, I, you know, I have people I consistently coach and I have fun there. I mean, I love the people I get to work with. You know, there's something special, like that first unlocking. You know, I know, I don't know if she's still on here, uh, Catherine, Carolina, I mean, Catherine's are just talking to, um, I think Tashina, Tashina, you're still on here. Like those initial, I used to just go by the moniker, the jump starter. And for a long time, I viewed that through a very negative lens. Cause if you think about that, it's that idea that like anybody can be a jump starter. Like anybody can know how to plug the cables in and jump a car. Right. And so I was like, ah, oh, that's not really super valuable. Like I just jump start people. Now it is really valuable. Don't get me wrong. Then when my wife called me the mind mechanic and I done a lot more self-work and, and, and learned a lot more things, I realized I can do more than just jumpstart. But the irony is, is still one of my favorite things is the jumpstarting. There's something special to take a person, you know, Catherine did it. Uh, you know, I know Carolina did it and Tashina, like some of the biggest aha, not that Tashina doesn't keep coming back and getting the tune up, but like her biggest breakthrough was in the very beginning when we first inter interacted, right? Uh, and, and, and so there's that aspect of, I love that unlocking and some people come back nine months later. Um, but that's my favorite part of the process. And so I've had to recognize that. And I keep kind of tuning what I'm doing to recognize that my, my favorite part at times is the very beginning. Uh, but I'm jumpstarting, but I have all these other tools and things I can say and, and whatnot uh, to, to be more mechanic, right? The mechanic knows how to get the car aligned right? Get the car aligned, get the change those spark plugs, the oil, you know, they can do some more tweaks than just jump in the car, but you usually also still don't spend, you know, your car's not six months in the, in the, in the, in the, with the, in with the mechanic. Right. And so, um, I'm kind of re recharging people's batteries. I'm like a charging station, gas station, you know, little tune ups. Uh, and you do a lot of the work on a daily basis, but I love the jump starts. I love those kind of, those are special moments for me. And then hearing where people are, because that's how it all started for me with coaching. I just did what I did, like I did today. And then I wouldn't talk to people and I'd be like, oh man, I wouldn't be where I am without you. And I'm like, I don't even know what I did. And for years, that's why I thought, I don't know what I did, but it was through continually doing it. And then realizing there's, there's a calling, there's a destiny, there's something here and continuing to follow that, um, following that impulse. So there's something that won't leave you alone. It's like Catherine today. Um, there's something there to that. There's something there to that. You should follow that impulse. So uh, I'm really grateful for all of you again. It's been an incredible call today. And uh, there you have it. Rock and roll. Have a phenomenal rest of your week. I look, uh, I look forward to seeing uh, a bunch of you again next week. And uh, you can go to mindtuneuptimelive.com and uh, register for these Zooms. And uh, I'm grateful for all of you. Keep rocking, keep rolling. Thank you, Catherine, for sharing. Thanks for the chat. Thanks for everybody who's on here. And uh, we'll talk soon. Take care. Bye-bye.